It was stepfather-wise. Whoops. This is me. And uh, I was very proud to do it. And I, it took a few more months. And I went back. I got 50 love letters from Claude. And, uh, but now he was a little jealous because uh, he couldn't get hired. Even though he had the name Picasso, nobody would hire him to direct or do anything. So he was envious. And um, I can't remember exactly where I wanted to go, but I went back to, 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 Holly, to, to Paris. And um, my father, I, my mother called to say, your father's in the hospital. He tried to commit suicide. I thought, oh my, I have to go to him. Francoise by now had bought me a wedding dress and it was about a year old. It was getting dusty and I said, Claude, when are we getting married? So he didn't answer me. He, he put his fist into the wall and we had a little dog named Tutu. He's around here somewhere. Tutu was our uh, poodle. And, um, oh, it's on the end. Down there. Yeah. Right here? I don't see two, two there. That's still not the one. This is my father. This one? No. Oh, I got the little poodle. They're cats. They're my cats. In any event, I, I had a, a poodle named Tutu, and I loved him dearly. And I took him and I said, when, I'll be in New York when you uh, make up your mind. And I took Tutu, never take a man's dog. This does not go over well. So he still owed me $3,000 that we were living off of because the government, the, the millions hadn't come in yet. So I said, I need my 3,000 back. And he threw it at me in the car and, and said, shove it up your private parts, which was really very nasty. So I went back and I'm crying in bed and my agent calls again and says, a director has called for you for something called the fan club. He wants to see you. There's a crochet, one of the, this is for Fabergé, this picture. For, uh, but there was a crocheted one coming that'll come up. And they saw that picture and they, they wanted to cast me in something called the fan club. So I had to fly now to Hollywood and I got another apartment. Now I had three apartments. I had one in Hollywood, one in New York, and one in uh, Paris. So um, in the elevator I met one day a, a man with his head hat down and he said, hi. You're from New York? I said, yes. And he said, well, I'm Bobby De Niro. Do you want to have dinner one day? And so we made a date. And that's how I met him. And we went out for a few weeks. And I still didn't know if I was engaged to Claude, but I, I just had to live my life. And then I'm at the pool of the Beverly Hills, and I'm, somebody pages me, and it's Jack Nicholson. He said, hi, I'm, I'm down here filming The Last Tycoon. Uh, I wanted to come by for tea. I said, well, I'd love to have dinner. He said, oh, I can't be seen with you. He was living with Angelica Houston at the time. I said, no tea, no dinner. And I hung up on him. And that's how men were in Hollywood. At least that's how Jack was. So uh, then now I was in New York and I was a woman on my own. Uh, and a producer called to arrange a blind date for me with, do you know Sean Connery? What movies was he in? 007, James Bond, remember? So he was a blind date, and I went out with him, and we went out a few times. And then there was Al Pacino, and that was a blind date, too. Remember the movies he was in? Godfather? Scarface? So Al was, it was a funny night with Al, because he said, uh, I'm giving a surprise party for Marty Bregman, so I'm, I think we should pretend that we're, we're going off to your place later to make love, and then he will, he, but we'll go back to where the party is and surprise him. So next thing you know, we're kissing on the dance floor, and I'm thinking, this is fun. This is a nice improvisation. He goes up to Marty and says, I'm going off with Carol. Uh, and then we get in the car, and he still kisses me, and he's continuing this, and I'm thinking, oh my, this is nice. But we arrive at the party, and I said, uh, well, uh, hi, Marion, how are you? 
so we we arrived at the party. I said, Al, we're here. He said, well, I don't want to go here. I, I want to make love to you. I said, Al, you're giving the party. You have to go. So we went to the party, and a teenager opens the door, door with a beer, and he goes in, and I never saw him again. And I found out later he got sober. This is another alcoholic story. So there were men, Rod Stewart, I used to go to his concerts. He's around here somewhere. Right here. Uh, what? There. He would take me to his concerts. He was a lot of fun. Dudley Moore was a friend. This is a picture of Jonas and Francoise in their house in New York. And uh, so in any event, uh, now I'm dating these a lot of stars. And Peter Sellers was actually my favorite. He's down here. He was delightful. He used to give my dog steak. Here's Peter. <laughs> and uh, he loved animals. He was a nice man. And what happened with Peter was, uh, I, as I said, I, I found out people who are, are rich and famous don't always have self-esteem. They may have ego, but they don't have self-esteem. So that's the way Sam Spiegel was and Peter Sellers. So uh, he took pictures of me. He took, I, I took that picture of him, but he took one of me that's around here somewhere. I don't know where it is. But uh, he didn't like it, and here it is. Here's Tutu, and here's, this was by Peter Sellers. And I think it's a very nice picture. I like it, but Peter didn't. And he felt he let me down. Here, I'll walk it around. Thank you. This one? Yeah. So he, That's a nice picture. It's lovely, isn't it? Hey, this one. So he thought he let me down and said, I'm going to have to have a reshoot. I'm sorry. The next night, day he called and said, I, 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 I don't like the pictures at all. So I felt that I wasn't pretty enough. He felt he didn't take a good picture. And our mutual self-esteem collided. And so I went and made a date with somebody I didn't like. And he asked me out for dinner. I said, I have a date. And then I never heard from him again. But then I heard he went to a place on, on Hollywood Boulevard called Optic Boutique. And my picture was hanging up. And he said, does anybody know where she is? And they was talking about me. So he hadn't forgotten me. But any movies you remember Peter Sellers in? The Pink Panther. Right. Dr. Inspector Clouseau. I can't find a canoe. Stuck and <laughs> Dr. Strangelove. The, oh, yeah. And the, oh, I can't think of it. The two girls, the, the, the two young kids were sitting on the, <laughs> the step at his apartment and, and kind of, I, I wish I could remember the name of the can. <laughs> I have memory troubles all the time. I totally identify. In any of he did something called Being There. He was very proud of that. That was his favorite film of all. So I adored Peter. In any event, in 77, Claude came to, uh, he wanted to get rid of the apartment. Now, we had it in the Sovereign, and we had it in both names. My name was on the lease, too. So. He had to get me to sign off. Now he's a multimillionaire, but he wanted me to pay half the rent. So I said, I don't think so, yeah. And I wanted to say, what I forgot to say about being a, a, a Stepford wife, when I was with Claude, before he got the, won the money and when he got it, we were living off of my money, but if I went shopping and I saw something I wanted, he had to approve of it before I bought it with my money, and I let him do this. That's what being a Stepford wife is, and that's what I was. I was in the movie and in life. So uh, I'm happy to say that's not happening anymore. Uh, but in any event, so we were together in 77, and I did sign off on the lease, and we made love again. And then in 78 or 9, his mother, oh, look, <laughs> Mary Ann, I'm laughing. And so in 79, his mother writes and says, I want you two to stop this fighting, and uh, I want you to marry my son. So she took me to lunch at Mommy's own. And I told her, uh, you know, I said, when, when we broke up, I said to, to Claude, 
you're doing to me what your father did to your mother and she cried and it was very touching so then she said he's coming from japan here and i want you to uh, make up so he arrived uh in 79 and we made love again and then he said uh, i've met somebody in paris who likes it i don't like paris i don't like wine i'm sober uh, i don't like clothing i find it boring and I don't like living in the past. I like America. I miss cheeseburgers, McDonald's, and I don't want to sit around looking at the way life used to be, which is what a lot of Paris is. That's my take on it. Now, the left bank, the, those Reeve Gauche people, I'm sure are wonderful, but I didn't circulate with them. I was with the right bank, which is called the bourgeoisie, and I really don't like them a lot. I don't like the mentality. They were from New Yi, and uh, essentially they're snobs. So, um, where was I? So, he said, but she likes, this woman likes Paris, and I didn't. So, he said, maybe I'll call you and we'll get married in Vegas, baby. So he leaves, and two months later, he marries that woman. So now I'm really jilted, and uh, I go to see a woman therapist named Evelyn Silvers. Anybody remember Phil Silvers? Mm -hmm. The comedian. Oh, she had two sets of twins with them, and this was a great woman, a great therapist, and she saved my life. And she said, Carol, did you ever think you're an alcoholic? I said, no, I'm just chic. I just drink wine. She said, well, your bruises aren't chic. I was in a relationship where I was getting beaten up, apparently. So uh, I'm going to have you answer some questions from a doctor from St. John's. So this man calls me on the phone and asks me 20 questions. Anybody here know about AA or getting sober? Anybody been through it? No. Well, if someone has a problem, there are 20 questions. It's very simple. And you ask them. And if they have three yeses, they're an alcoholic. Hmm. So I had three yeses. And I thought, well, I'm going to have a duck. Remember Strike the Rich when the duck came down? I'm going to get this huge present. Well, instead, he said, you're an alcoholic and you have to go to AA. I thought, not me. I'm not going to go with a bunch of uh, perverts in raincoats. Not, that's not going to be my life, my style. So she said, I'll help you. I'll get somebody to take you. So she arranges, knowing I like the rich and famous, she gets a man called Gordon McRae to take me to my first meeting. Anybody remember Gordon? Mm -hmm. Oklahoma, where the oh, same. Yeah. 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 Remember Gordon? Yeah. Wonderful man. And his daughter was my best friend, but I couldn't tell her that Gordon was taking me to meetings because the, their marriage, their mother and father had split up, and uh, so she couldn't, she didn't want, he, Gordon didn't want Sheila to know that he was taking me to meetings. So we went to the first meeting, and immediately I saw a movie star, and I thought, what? It was in a bowling alley, you know, smoky, whatever. I thought, what is this with a movie star here? And I realized something was wrong with my values. So I said to Gordon, I said, will you take me to another meeting? He said, only if you stop drinking. I didn't want to stop drinking. I just wanted to be with Gordon and go and hang out. So I had to do what he said, and I essentially got sober for Gordon, and that was in 1980. Today I have 37 years, and I owe it to really to Gordon. But then he slipped, and they, they worried about me. And then he went to something, and they said, you have to go to Al-Anon. Anybody know about Al-Anon? Al-Anon is a companion program for people who are alcoholics to help them. It has to do with control issues. So, uh, so I went to Al-Anon, and then Gordon came back to AA and got sober. He was never anonymous nor am I. So, uh, that, now, part of getting sober is to write about your life. You have to look back on the past, and it's called the fourth step. You've probably heard about the steps they have.